This is part three of the optimization word problem test and we're on question number five and six for this video. So the first question says an airplane is flying east at 300 kilometers an hour. It passes over an airport 10 minutes before a second airplane flying south at 420 kilometers per hour passes over the same point. Assuming they're both at the same altitude, when is the distance a minimum? Okay, so we have one plane here. I need to know where is everyone at time zero? Where are the planes at t equals zero? So at t equals zero, this plane is here, plane one. This is the airport. But there is another plane that's coming south, so it's going to be north of this plane, and it's coming at 420 kilometers per hour. So the question you first have to answer is, where was the second plane at time zero? Because I know where the first one was. Okay, so I need to know how far away, if it passed over here in 10 minutes, it had 10 minutes of traveling to do, and it's going 420 kilometers per hour. So what's 10 minutes? So 1 sixth, right? 10 minutes equals 10 over 60 minutes per hour. So it's 1 sixth of 420. So that gives me 70 kilometers. That's where it's starting, right here. This distance is going to be 70 kilometers. So that means that as this plane, the first plane goes this way, its distance is going to be 300x, where x is the number of hours. The other plane starts at 70 kilometers, and we're going to subtract its distance of 420x. So that's going to be this distance. So at time zero, they were 70 kilometers apart, and hopefully we can find a point where they were closer than that. And that should be true because this plane is traveling slower than this plane. So as this starts out, the distance is here, and then this one's going a little faster. So let's say it came down this far, and this one would only be this far away, and something like that. Okay, so we're trying to minimize this length. And as you can see, that length is actually the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So I can make up a calc uh, an equation. I can say d squared. So let, let, you should have some let statements in here, you know, something like let d be distance between the two planes. and let x represent number of hours. Okay, so I say d squared is going to be equal to, and so it's going to be the square of each of those, 70 minus 420x squared plus 300x in brackets, don't forget, squared. Okay, so if you go back to uh, one of my lessons dealing with um, these distance, speed, time kind of questions, there is an easier way to do this without taking the square root and using the half power and all that. It gets, gets really messy. You can leave it as d squared and take the derivative of each side. You can do that two ways. First of all, you could expand all this and then just take the derivative or you can use the chain rule, right? So I'm going to use the chain rule. I'm going to say 2d dx. So I'm taking the derivative of this side as well. So I say 2d dx is equal to, and then I'm going to say 2 times 70 minus 420x. So I reduced it by 1 times the derivative of the inside times minus 420 plus 2 times 300x times 300. Okay, so now the next part is to just expand all this. 
and oh, I did it somewhere here, it's going to look something like this. So do this work on your own, it's just calculations. So I get 532, 800x minus 58,800. So that's 2d dx. Now you don't really need to know what's in the denominator because as you know, when we set this equal to zero, we only care about what is in the numerator, right? We can't make the denominator zero, so it's what makes the numerator zero. So you could say that the derivative of, of d here is this divided by 2d, which if you go back, you could figure out if you did, you know, you do the exponent to the half power, that sort of thing. But you can leave it like this and just say, now you have to check with your teacher because some teachers have their own ways of doing these and they might expect you to do it to the half power. If so, leave me a little note and I can write it the other way if you're having trouble with it. So I'm going to say for critical values, set 2d dx equal to zero. So if I set this equal to zero, I just get 58,800 is equal to 53,200,800x. And so x is going to be this divided by this. Make sure you divide the right one. And you should get x is approximately 0 0.11. Okay, now this is not a good answer in terms of presentation, right? You wouldn't ever tell someone, I'll see you in 0.11 hours, right? It's just not done that way. So I want to know um, what this time is. So what's 0.11 in terms of, this is 0.11 of an hour, right? This is in hours. X represent the number of hours. So 0.11 hours, 0.11 hours is equal to, so I do just multiply it by 60 to get minutes. So that's 6 point six minutes that's still not a good answer right six point six minutes I would never say I'd say so many minutes and so many seconds so six minutes and point six times sixty will convert that to seconds for you six minutes and thirty six seconds okay so that's the first part of your solution because it says um, at what time is the distance between them a minimum? At what time is the distance between them a minimum? Oh no, I thought maybe it asked you what the distance was. So if you had to find the distance, you could substitute this back into the original equation. Your x at 0.11. Okay, so that would give you the closest if that was something that was asked. Okay, the second question, I think I might even have room to put it on the bottom of this page. It says, determine if the particle moving according to the following equation is speeding up or slowing down at t equals 3. This is a question I always ask my students because, believe it or not, a lot of them would get it wrong. And it's really a very simple question. So let's write out the position function. So you get this, minus 21t squared plus 60t. So remember that the derivative of the position function gives you the acceleration, or sorry, the velocity, and the derivative of the velocity will give you acceleration. So v at t is equal to, that's s prime t. I'll write that out. You probably wouldn't need to write that because it's probably assumed that you, you know that. So 3 times 2 is 6t squared minus 42t plus 60. Okay, and what is the acceleration? The acceleration at time t is equal to the derivative of the velocity, which is equal to the second derivative of the position function. And in this case, the derivative of this is going to give you 12t minus 42. Okay, so I have, this is my velocity, this is my acceleration, and they want to know at t equals 3. So at three seconds, what was the velocity? So I want to know what v at three is. And you should know why I'm doing this, right? So three squared is nine times six is 54. 
and 3 times 42 is going to be minus 126 plus 60 and 54 and 60 is 104 what's that minus 14 oh I'm going to double check that on my calculator just so I don't leave you with the wrong answer I have a cold as you can tell minus 12 oh, I'm close brain is a little bit foggy okay so minus 12 it's good to know whether it's negative or positive that's the key part here right so a at 3 is equal to 36 minus 42 which is negative 6 okay now the whole trick or the whole the, the what you need to know is that if speeding up the definition of speeding up I'm gonna write that in pink up here so speeding up means means that the acceleration times the velocity is greater than zero okay if it's slowing down it's going to be less than zero so if I do v at 3 times a at 3 v at 3 times a at 3 is going to be 72 what's most important is you recognize that it is positive so therefore this will be speeding up speeding up at three seconds and there you go that's the whole shape and match for this little um, unit test I hope you could have seen everything I hope I had it all centered and let me know what you think if you need some more help with this or if you'd like me to do it a different way let me know and I hope you're all healthy and much healthier than I am right now all the best on your unit test Bye for now.